Howdy, this is Lemmy with RevZilla. Welcome to another two minute lesson. Today we're gonna to be talking about tire pressure. Now, for those of you who have been in the motorcycle game for any period of time, you'll notice that just about everybody recommends that you run the tire pressure that your manufacturer recommends. And we do the same thing here at RevZilla. However, we also do recognize that there are people out there who are very diligent about maintaining tire pressure. And we also recognize too that there are times when factory tire pressures aren't necessarily the best ones for the job at hand. So we're gonna give you a little guidance today on exactly what kind of tire pressures you might wanna consider if you're doing something a little bit out of the ordinary with your motorcycle. So we're gonna start with probably the most common scenario for most riders, and that's a street bike being ridden on the street. Well, right there, I am gonna kind of go back to manufacturer's pressures. They're listed in your manual, and they're usually very helpful. It's a great departure point. However, I would say don't feel like you need to be locked into those pressures. Again, think of them as a departure point. Experiment a little bit. You can always overinflate a little or underinflate and see what kind of performance your motorcycle yields. Now we'll move on to our next scenario, and that's somebody taking a street bike to the track, possibly a race rep, maybe not. Now this is a little different scenario here. You're probably gonna wanna lower your pressures for a couple different reasons. Firstly, you're gonna want the largest contact patch possible. Lowering the pressure allows that to happen. It puts more rubber onto the ground. It's gonna give you the best chance at having that tire give you the stick and grip that you need to kind of work your way around the track. The other reason, of course, too, is because the tires run hotter because they're being worked more and worked faster. They run hotter, so your hot tire pressure comes up more significantly. So even though you may start with a lower cold pressure, your hot tire pressure may be exactly the same as when you're running around at street pressures. Now the easiest way to determine exactly what you should be running, surprisingly enough, is to call up your tire manufacturer. You'd be surprised most of the tire manufacturers who know that their tires are being brought to the track do actually develop pressures that they recommend riders use. So that's an easy first stop. Now for those of you who don't have that information at hand or don't have the time to get in touch with the tire manufacturer, I would say a good general starting point is just slightly below street pressures, just a couple of pounds. So for a lot of you, that's gonna be somewhere in the 30 pound range. Don't be afraid to sort of work from that again as a departure point. Don't be afraid to, to adjust front and rear individually to see what's gonna give your bike the best performance for you. Now, of course, we move to those of you in the off-road crowd. Now, you're gonna be wanting to run lower pressures, but for different rationale here. Instead, it's not so much of a heat issue as it is a tire deformation issue. You want the tire to deform over the irregularities you're gonna come across on the trail. Now, for those of you who are riding big adventure bikes, you sort of have a little bit of a tightrope to walk here. You need lots and lots of pressure to keep your tire from being damaged. Pinch flats are exceptionally common um, as are tires coming off of the bead if you're riding off-road on a big adventure bike. So you can drop your pressure a little bit, but if you drop too much, you're gonna be sort of in that arena. So I'd recommend most of you start at 26 or 27 pounds or so and experiment from there. You can go lower, you will get better grip, but again, you do sort of run that risk potentially of sidelining your motorcycle and wind up having to fix a flat on the trail. Now, for those of you on lighter off-road bikes, perhaps you're on a trail bike or perhaps you're on a dual sport, you can come down a little bit lower. You probably have bead locks on your bike, plus the lower weight of that makes it a much less significant risk for a pinch flat. So if you're riding a dual sport or a trail bike, you can probably come down, I would say a good starting point is probably 15 pounds or so and feel free to drop a couple pounds beyond that to see what gives you the best grip levels on your motorcycle. Now for those who are on dual sports and adventure bikes especially, it's very important to remember if you did not truck your bike to the trailhead, you do need to put street pressure back in those tires when you head back out. Otherwise, you're gonna run exceptionally hot. You're really gonna kill the life of your tires. You know, knobbies on pavement just suffer bad life anyway, but if we heat those things up, again, from running improper pressures, trail pressures on the street, it just makes a bad situation even worse. So, tire pressure is super important. You should check yours often, and you shouldn't be afraid to experiment to make your bike setup work for you. Check out our other two-minute lessons. I'm Lem, I'm out of here.